Honorable Sanji Monaghan, thank you very much for being here at the uh, Hague Summit on the International Law and Human Rights okay. and for your keynote speech as well. Thank Thanks you very so much. much. Okay. Um, regarding your extensive experience in the promotion and protection of the human rights issues, do you think that it's possible to ensure a better adoption of human rights? Um, are the international agreements the best way to achieve this fulfillment? Or it's more a cooperation between civil organizations and political institutions necessary? Um, countries, including mine, have signed all sorts of instruments, human rights instruments, over the years. But what we are witnessing in most cases is that despite the fact that they have ratified an international instrument, despite the fact that the constitution is rights-based, states don't, don't deliver on, 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 on the protected rights of, of, of their communities. But that doesn't mean that, um, that we should not pursue further ratifications and especially without any reservations. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the role that uh, civil society plays is crucial. They have to keep talking to governments. They have to keep highlighting deficiencies in the delivery of human rights. Um, I'll give you an example with the African context. The African Commission on Human and People's Rights, it operates along the same lines as the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva. Every two years, countries have to come to the Commission to demonstrate to the Commission how they are implementing provisions of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. The Commission names <coughs> and shames, they interrogate, they want to know what programs countries have put in place, mm -hmm. they want to know what laws have been changed to, 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 to bring the country into compliance with them, with them, with, with the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. And as the countries submit their two yearly reports, we have what are called shadow reports from civil society organizations. And most times, you'll find that uh, what the government is saying is actually a little bit exaggerated. And this is, this is exposed by shadow reports, where, because um, when, when the commission receives a, a periodic report, it goes online. So civil society organizations have it and they're able to say no here, they're wrong here, yes, mm -hmm. they have done something. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it should be an ongoing exercise, all of us, all hands on deck. Thank you. Yeah. Um, after its creation, the International Criminal Court mm -hmm. um, helped uh, to end uh, impunity for per perpetrators uh, of the most serious crimes mm -hmm. in the international community. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the most important states still um, are not part of the from um, a statute. Mm -hmm. How can we convince those states to, to get involved mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. throw out the human rights and the international organizations like how to you know the problem here is state sovereignty. Um, the international community civil society organizations can only talk and courage. And um, most times ratification is also dictated by what pertains in the laws of a particular country. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and also, as you know, a lot of things are political. But from the perspective of the court, we keep talking, we, pe we are advocating for universality of, uh, of the Rome Statute. But that's the best we can do. And as we are aware, all the international NGOs and IGOs are also talking about encouraging more states to, to, to join the Rome Statute. Because the belief is that, um, you know, this is one instrument that should be universal, that yeah. should apply to each and every country, that should protect uh, citizens of each and every country in the universe. But um, as we are aware, we, we still get ratifications of the Rome Statute. <coughs> the, maybe the only problem is that it is slow. And as you rightly point out, the leading countries, some of the leading countries in the world 
are not part of exactly. it. But it is so complex. It is so complex. Yeah. But uh, this doesn't mean that we should stop. We should continue encouraging such things mm -hmm. and talking publicly about um, what some people have referred to as double standards. Because um, as we are aware, some of those states have referred cases to the ICC. Yeah. And yet they themselves refuse to be, um, to, they, they, they refuse to be regulated by the, by the Rome Statute. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to ask you a question also about women's rights. Uh, we have an initiative at the Institute for Culture Diplomacy called Born Equal, uh, which is trying to really look at the situation of women's rights around the world. Yeah. On the one hand, as you look at cases like Rwanda, uh, there's reason maybe to be optimistic. Uh, I think yes. there's a lot of Rwanda has the highest number of uh, female members of parliament, exactly. uh, and you really see things happening. Yeah. On the other hand, I think the fundamental challenge that remains is the issue of access. I think very often as you look around the world, there isn't equal access, uh, yeah. whether it's education, whether it's employment, etc. Yes. So my first question is, is there reason to be optimistic? Do you see progress being made uh, as you look at the international situation? Mm -hmm. And secondly, what responsibility is there for civil society to actually implement more uh, and where do you see opportunities where we can really get better results yeah um, the, the, the issue of women is very topical and I'm not going to say that progress has not been made especially in developing countries and as you rightly point out politically a country like Rwanda is doing very very well South Africa is not doing badly so it depends mostly on what you are looking at. For instance, in Botswana, there are 57 members of parliament. And I think this year, we, we went to elections in October last year, and if I'm not wrong, we have only four women. Okay. And this has been the norm, if you like. But to the extent that the country is democratic, it gives space to men and women to participate politically. Okay. I think that's an achievement. Okay. Nobody, women are not stopped. Okay. But then, of course, there are factors that militate you know, against women making any positive uh, advances. For okay. instance, issues of finance, issues of responsibilities in their homes, and etc. But at local level, we have a lot of women in councils and stuff. Um, and again, it depends on where, in which country you are. For instance, you, you, you are talking about access to justice. It is so topical. It is so topical. And this is why I thought it was necessary for me to highlight the developments in Botswana. At least uh, women are able to access courts. Some of them can't because they don't have money, because this is a very expensive mm -hmm. business. But uh, to the extent that courts are now being very progressive and purposive and aggressive, if you like, in, 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 their, in their judgments, um, we see some progress. And uh, in, I mean, it depends again on, on where you are really the degree of independence of the judges, the independence of the judiciary differs. But yes, we are seeing some progress in some areas, and there are some areas that are still lagging behind. And um, our view as women is that, and women and men actually, we should not relent, we should not give up. Change comes slowly, especially in, in um, situations like ours where societies are so conservative in this day and age where a, a man he, he should not be consulted when he, his, his child is being adopted. This is based on culture. And culture is not about to go anywhere. And culture is the basis of civil laws. And uh, I think our responsibility, especially you, the younger generation, <coughs> is to make sure that there is some harmonization between culture and constitutions. And of course, as we all know, when a, a cultural rule or a traditional rule violates the constitution, the constitution takes place or the cultural rule should give way. Okay. So in my view, there's a lot to do. 
it's still a long way off, but we, we will get there. And I, I think one of the things that I personally have been advocating for is we are the role models. We need to inculcate these values on yourselves. And you also <coughs> have to be receptive. Because, um, it, it, for instance, in my country, a lot of young people your age are mostly interested in what car they are driving tomorrow, <clears throat> what suit they are wearing, what watch they are wearing. Issues of human rights, and it is, and these are their own rights. They've left them um, basically to us. But I'm now tired. When I leave the court, I'll be an old woman. <laughs> I can't be doing what I used to do. I mean, I say this to my children. You are so out of it, as if when you reach a certain age, these rights will be on your table and you don't have to worry. You don't even know what we are doing. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you partially answered my last question, uh, where I wanted to talk to you actually mm -hmm. about culture uh, and what culture diplomacy can do. One of the dilemmas of human rights is very much it's looked upon as a cultural issue. Yeah. I respect your culture, you respect my culture, it's a, exactly. uh, human rights don't apply. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a challenge. So I'm wondering, within that framework of this cultural mm -hmm. challenge you referred to, mm -hmm. what can cultural diplomacy do? Uh, or do you see an opportunity for cultural diplomacy itself, so really to build understanding, to build trust uh, between groups, between, let's say, nations? Yeah. Um, what opportunities do you see for cultural diplomacy to also promote human rights? Oh, I mean, the, 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 the sky is, is your limit. As I said, there is nothing wrong with culture. In all societies, including yours, you are where you are, at the base is culture and tradition, whether you are in Germany or in Botswana or, or whatever. And what is happening now in most societies, especially developing societies, is this um, marrying okay. of culture and interrogation of culture okay. and, um, and, 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 and constitutions say, civil laws, which is being done very diplomatically with, that, with the sensitivities of not offending the, the, the traditionalist. And um, we are witnessing, like, and this is why I wanted to, I decided to share the Botswana experience with you. It can be done through advocacy, proper advocacy, like civil society, or through judgments of the courts. And one thing I want to tell you is that these progressive judgments that I've been talking about have been so criticized by the community that, that is served by Castro. Mm -hmm. They just think that these young judges, lawyers, are trampling on tradition and overturning things that worked. But not everybody there says it. People are now saying, oh no, but why should a woman not be able to inherit her, 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 from her parents? And in this particular case that I was talking about, they went and looked for a, a, a young man, a relative, very like removed from the family, mm -hmm. a nephew, mm -hmm. because custom says uh, the women shouldn't. So I think there is a world of opportunity for organizations like yours to continue talking about culture and we did it. We, we did it and we were labeled elitists. Mm -hmm. We were labeled um, anti-morality, anti you know, customary morality. But now the courts are taking over and a, a lot of people are appreciating it. Well, thank you very much for sharing with us your insights from Thanks. Botswana, but also mm. from the court. And, thank you so uh, much. We're grateful to you, and we look yeah. forward, hopefully, to continuing our, our dialogue. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks.